Jeez. With the difficult terrain, we ended up going using a lot more battery than we than we thought, just getting to the flat block. We weren't able to capture any data due to the amount of battery that was used on the elevation change. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to pick up and um, punt and go to the other side. So today is day two of the project. Day one presented several challenges with the terrain and just how we're gonna approach the project. After getting through day one and getting some resolution to those conflicts, it really helped us plan a little bit better for day two. We learned a couple of things from yesterday, so hopefully today goes a little bit smoother. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna, we're gonna get down in the, in the valley. We're gonna take some GPS shots uh, to check with our surface. And then uh, after that, we'll start making our flights. The engineer is gonna walk it with the property manager. He's gonna take a handheld GPS and export me out a list of waypoints. And then we're gonna fly that waypoint list as a corridor. So we're gonna essentially take a 160 acre flight project and probably condense it down to about 20. Uh, and then we're just really gonna key in on the areas where we know we can actually build. There is miles and miles of ATV trails. We took off at the top of the hill, rode down probably three or four miles, drove through a couple of feet of water, did a little bit of mudding, all that just to get to the actual project site. After we collect all the data with the LiDAR, we'll take it back and we'll create a surface over the area that we've flown. And we'll take these GPS shots and we'll compare them to the surface that the LiDAR created. And we just it's just an accuracy check, make sure our data is good. All right, that'll do it for here. We're gonna verify the data from the last flight that we just flew and make sure that we've got enough data for the entire project. Yeah, that, that's just gonna help us determine whether we need to fly again. So that's the gap, all that right there. The ground data stops right there. Like all this right here is gonna classify as ground if I don't get something below it. Yeah. See, that's from the day, mm -hmm. right? And then you turn on yesterday as you can see where the gap is. This is all unprocessed data too. Yeah. So is it gonna put a shift on it when I process it? Let's fly that gap. Why don't I do this? KML. Let me trace that area and then export out of KML. Yeah. I'll email that to everybody. Yep. So we've looked at the last flight compared to yesterday's flights and we've got a little bit of gap in the data from just around where the bluff is. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a small flight block and manually fly the bluff area to try to pick up some more data um, on that. And that should be everything that we need. Okay, y'all ready? We'll probably have one more flight after this and do a, uh, over the bluff. We have about a 12 minute flight. It's gonna do a route at the bottom part of the mountain and, uh, and fly all the way up to the bluff and then turn around and come back and scan the rest of the, the other side of the mountain uh, for that proposed road corridor. So being in the field and driving four wheelers and you know seeing this beautiful property is awesome. Oh god. We got a flat. Just slammed into a rock going over the water. Yeah. And you felt the whole thing jolt. Oh really? Yeah. 